Hey guys, welcome back to Builder Funnel Radio. This is episode 74 and another edition of the Growth Series. Today we're going to dive into some digital marketing FAQs. And so I pull out a few questions that we've been getting and answer those for you. And uh, I hope you enjoy this format. We'll probably do a few more like this over the next several months. Um, sit back and relax and enjoy this episode on Builder Funnel Radio. Hey guys, welcome back to episode 74 on Builder Funnel Radio. This is another episode of the Growth Series. And for today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. We're going to do kind of a digital marketing FAQs episode. So we get a lot of questions on social media, comments on our blog. People will email in directly responding to a lot of our um, email newsletters and blasts that go out. And so wanted to pull in some common questions that we're getting and address those here. And also just wanted to flag you and let you know, hey, if you have digital marketing questions that you want us to answer on the podcast, send those to radio at builderfunnel.com and then go ahead and put question in the subject line, uh, all caps, that would be super helpful. That lets us uh, basically flag those a lot easier. So um, let's dig in. The first question comes from John and John was asking me, hey, I have a Facebook page do I really need a website? Now, the short answer is yes, John, you really need a website, um, but let's talk about why. And the reason is Facebook, uh, Instagram, Hows, platforms like this, you don't have control over them and they could disappear tomorrow. We just don't know. Sure, there's a high probability that some of those things will keep going, but I'd rather build my house on something that I know is going to be mine forever. And so that's why having your own domain, your own website is absolutely critical. And so we always think about your website as kind of home base. And that's the foundation for all of your digital marketing efforts. So if you've got a Facebook page, great, you can build an audience there, a following, but you can drive people back to your website. If you've got a house profile and you even build a little mini site there, like fine, but you can drive traffic back to your website. Same with Instagram, same with LinkedIn, all these platforms. And so the idea is that you want to own um, that property. And so with your website, you buy the domain, you pay the 13 bucks every year. Uh, and then as long as you're hosting your website content, that site is yours, it's going to live on forever. And then as you build content, so blog posts, service pages, uh, available homes pages, about us pages, all that content lives on forever and that can start to pull in traffic through seo you can link to it from your social media platforms but if you just build your house on facebook and you have a business page you build up let's say you build up a following of twenty thousand people like that's awesome but again facebook could disappear and then all that work all that that following is gone Sure, you can take some of that brand equity, transfer it to another platform, but um, you're going to lose a lot during that process. And so um, in thinking about some of these other platforms, I always recommend, hey, make your website home base, leverage the other platforms, but you must have a website. So John, that's my answer there. Um, let's move on to the next question. The next thing, it doesn't come from one specific person because I hear this a lot. So I typically am talking to about uh, five to 10 different builders, remodelers, um, all across the country, uh, pretty much every week. And so I get to hear a lot of the challenges and this comes up frequently. And that is um, the idea of getting a negative review, but a negative review from somebody you don't recognize and you don't know who they are. And so this happens and it's super frustrating. You might get a comment like, hey, worked with ABC Remodeling Company, the experience was terrible. They didn't deliver on all these things they promised. And then they sign off on some name or it's just anonymous. And you're going, I don't recognize any of the details of this. I don't recognize the person, like something's up here. And so here's what I recommend in terms of responding because you can't delete it. That's always the question people ask, can I just delete this? No, you can't delete a negative review. You can't delete any review. Google just doesn't allow it. Um, Facebook doesn't allow it. These platforms 
um, are pretty strict. So the best bet is to respond. You don't want to ignore it. And you want to respond. I like this approach for, for ones that you don't recognize. So go on, you see the comment, you're like, I have no idea who this person is. Great, I'm going to reply. And you say, hey, Joe, you know, I, we've been going through our records and I don't recognize any of the details of this project. I'm super sorry that that was your experience. Uh, I'd love to connect with you and make sure this is something we can rectify if we did work with you, but it doesn't look like we did. Uh, and then work to take that conversation offline. As you know, this person probably doesn't exist or they're a competitor of yours or um, just some random person just kind of wreaking havoc across the board. And so um, basically by responding, you are basically sending a signal to anybody else that comes and reads the reviews and they can see, hey, uh, this business is proactive, they're replying, they're responding. And you know, the average person reading reviews is pretty intelligent, right? We all read reviews when we're buying uh, products and services. You can tell the crazy people or the bogus stuff pretty easily. And so that's really what you're trying to do is just highlight and acknowledge for anybody in the future that this is just a bogus thing. I don't know where it came from. It's not legitimate. Now you can still use the same approach, approach with a negative review that is legit because it does happen. We all make mistakes. Uh, you're just going to frame it a little differently. Hey, super sorry, uh, Joe, that you didn't get our best effort on this one. We'd love to uh, course correct and make this right. You know, let's connect and then, you know, give them your phone number or whatever it is. Take the conversation offline. That way, people that are coming to read the reviews, um, they can see, hey, this business is proactive. Sure, they made a mistake. Nobody's perfect. Like, we all get that, you know. Whenever you're looking at reviews, you're typically, uh, if, if somebody has a five star, I'm always a little bit skeptical. I like to see the, you know, 4.7, 4.8, you know, some even 4.5 and above, t depending on what I'm looking at. And so, um, again, with these types of reviews, the key is respond and then just try to bury them with a bunch of positive reviews. So go out there and get a bunch of your happy customers to leave some reviews. And that's really the best way to. Uh, counteract kind of those fake reviews you get because you're going to get them. It's frustrating. Just respond and move on. You know, they'll never reply. And so that's just the best way to deal with those. Um, moving on to the next question. So um, again, this is something that I hear from about half the people I, I'm talking to right now. And that is, hey, I'm super busy right now. I feel like I should be doing something with my marketing, but I don't need any more leads. And so a lot of times people are considering something like, maybe I'll redesign my website or um, maybe I'll work on this other project or something uh, within the marketing realm. And so what I always tell these people is, hey, this is the best time to be working on your marketing is when you don't need the leads because it's the companies that are consistent through the good times, the middle of the road times and the tough times they're gonna get the lion's share of the leads and the projects when things are tough because you've been building your brand, building awareness, generating leads and opportunity when things are good. And even if you can't handle all the leads and all the projects now, it's okay to say, hey, uh, we actually can't start this project for about a year, um, but I'd still love to learn a little bit more and put you into the queue if that's a time frame you're willing to wait. Um, and what this does is let's say this person doesn't want to wait, you know, then they're going to go to try to find somebody else. Uh, and that's okay. Cause you couldn't service that person anyway, but if they are willing to wait, it sends a signal to them that, Hey, this company is super important. Like they must be way in demand if they can't even start a project for a year. Um, and if everyone's busy, they're going to go talk to some other companies and find the same thing. So I think that puts you in a really positive light, but part of it too, is that you're building, you know, that pipeline for the future and for, you know, whether it's 12, 24 months or longer, we know we're going to hit some sort of dip. It might not be a massive dip, but it will be some sort of dip. Business moves in cycles and we're at, at about 10 years into a pretty strong run here. So I always like to tell people, hey, the, the companies that are the most consistent throughout the good times and the bad, they're the ones that when things get really tough and there's fewer projects, there's less demand, it's the companies doing marketing that are gonna get those projects and get those uh, deals closed because uh, they're the ones generating the attention uh, and doing the marketing. So um, 
like I said, I've been talking to a lot of people and there, you know, there's a bunch of you that are being really proactive right now. So um, that's awesome. And I definitely recommend continue to, to work on your marketing, make sure you're profitable during the good times, um, but do invest in marketing so that when times are tough, continue to invest and you'll be one of the stronger companies coming out of those low points. Um, the last question comes from Evan and he basically said, Hey, I'm uh, posting to Instagram but I'm just having it auto post through to Facebook, you know, should I be doing that or should I be doing something else? And um, this is a very specific question, but I think it's a good one because I want to expand it a little bit. Um, and anytime you post to a platform like Instagram and then it auto posts somewhere else, people can see that it was auto posted. And so it feels a little bit like an afterthought. Uh, and it, when somebody's on that platform and experiencing that, you know, you lose a little bit of credibility there. And so I always say it's, it's best to contextualize your post for the platform. So even if you're going to use the same content, which I definitely recommend repurposing and reusing content. So you've got a photo that you really want to use on all the platforms, just change your caption or change your description or your text on Instagram or on Facebook or on LinkedIn. And that way you can contextualize it for the platform. Again, LinkedIn is a little more business focused. So you might want to change the tone or the style or the phrasing um, that goes along with that image. And so although the question was, hey, should I just post from Instagram to Facebook? I think the real question is, should I basically copy and paste across all platforms? And in a perfect world, I would say, you know, repurpose content, video, photos, whatever it is, as much as possible, but make sure it's at least changed a little bit. It's tweaked, it's contextualized to the platform that you're posting on. Um, so then you don't look like uh, you're just treating that platform as an afterthought. People can notice that it looks a little bit like, a, a, you know, robotic or, you know, automated or any of those types of things. You want it to come across as human and authentic. And so you lose a little bit of that when you do that auto posting through, through every single platform. So those are the questions uh, that I have for today. I hope this helped. And again, if you have digital marketing questions that you want us to address here on the podcast, go ahead and send those in to radio at builderfunnel.com and put question in all caps in the subject line. We'll flag those down and we'll start putting this into some future episodes. Um, thank you again for listening to Builder Funnel Radio. I hope this was a good episode for you and we will see you next time on Builder Funnel Radio. Mm -hmm.